Hey Tankers and welcome back to World of Tanks with PR154 where we are following Rob S of the Saints Clan in the TSX Soviet medium tank T3485. Now this is one of the ones on the tech tree and one of a number of T3485 platforms that they have in the game. As you can see you've got a couple here between T3485, Rudy, Type 58 and T3485M. Now of all of these vehicles that they are fairly similar, very similar turret characteristics but you know that once you get towards type 58 things start to get a little bit different type 58 has lower alpha but it has a higher rate of fire which gives it a net higher dpn albeit at a cost of penetration t3485m however is the star of the show it has significantly higher dpm owing to its rate of fire still more or less identical gun does have a slightly faster aim time than t3485 but we'll talk about those other statistics in due course for now we're going to kick start this fight with a good old-fashioned car chase and we've got amd 178b at a distinct hit point disadvantage against amx 1357 but although it struggled to land its shots initially amx 1357 it's finding its groove from point blank range knocking out the enemy wheelie they're also joined in the bowl by vk 2801 105 who lands a nice hit into Stritzvan M4257 leaving not much for T50-2 to clean up. Unfortunately the same is true for VK2801-105. Not a hell of a lot left in that and SPIC does an absolutely devastating hit into T50-2 allowing T3485M to knock out the second scout on Rob S's team. At this point in time it's probably worth talking about the differences between the two tanks now that Rob S has actually positioned to just behind where the T3485M was. The main difference between the two vehicles other than the 17% increase in DPM for the M version is that you get a 75mm thick upper frontal plate on T3485M. This is as opposed to 45mm on T3485 and as you can see once you're starting to use 7 degrees of gun depression on the two mediums the difference becomes quite stark. In the meantime the enemy Comet is moving in to knock out the last friendly light tank and unfortunately that friendly light tank has ended up in quite a nasty crossfire between four enemy vehicles going back to the garage of Accordingly, Rob S pushes on the T3485M, now rendered one shotable through his liberal use of premium ammunition and is now rounding on SPIC. Probably not too necessary to keep using the gold stuff here, but you know how it is, once that bloodlust kicks in, you're kind of committed as well on the credits. But SPIC manages to slip away this time. SU-152 is the guardian on the bridge, lining up on Dicker Max and annihilating it with a single shot. Rob S is now in the overwatch position over the middle of the Fjord with a commanding position over Comet and Jackson with uh, shots going into both of these vehicles knocking out the Comet while Tiger 131 knocks out the Jackson near simultaneously. Reinforced now by a T-150 and Type 58 they now turn their attention on SPIC. Hoping that vehicle's still there, it looks like it's tucked away, heading towards the water. Yes, it is still there, still on about 538 hit points. It's copping some fire there from T-150 as it's making its way around. But as it's fallen back, it's fallen into the crosshairs of the Super Hellcat, which absolutely punishes it for 270 hit points. Rob S returns to the Overwatch position, but there's probably not too much to see here, as we can see that... Uh, towards the D-line, the battle has already been joined by a number of both friendly and enemy vehicles. So probably the best thing for Rob S to do here is to get into that fight. Taking the lower road is probably the more sensible option here because to take the higher road, we know there's a heap of enemy tank destroyers up there and Type 58 is kind of finding that out firsthand. It's copping quite a few shells here along the way. Now it's doing its best to reverse here but uh, it's ultimately shut down by the Dicker Max. So taking the smarter low road, Rob S decides to make an entrance, rounding the corner, lining up on VK3601H and sending it back to the garage. Next fixed him, KV2 as a nice open shot to the side of the turret following up. He still has not unloaded these gold shells however. But uh, who can blame him? He does have fantastic penetration with these. 194 millimeters up from your usual 144 millimeters. And as he claims his fourth kill of the game on KV2, he's just making this look absolutely effortless. But uh, this is likely to be an incredibly expensive game. Oh no, he has actually loaded the standard AP. Well, that was that was a little bit novel. Hopefully this one won't be hurting the hip pocket so much. So they are now rounding on the enemy T3485. Uh, Follow-up shot now with the standard AP 
in a T3485. Leo presses on. Now, special thanks to this Leo, actually, is driven by Grim Reaper 456, and it's thanks to receiving their replay that we've been able to bring you some of the fight scenes of this battle. They round the corner, they shut down the enemy T3485, and that clears out most enemy resistance on this flank. It looks like there's still a Britan Panther around, so they'll need to be mindful of that as they push around, but they can be pretty confident of uh, taking this at this point in time. They are four guns up on the enemy team, they outnumber them two to one. Rob S hesitating slightly as uh, the teammates go first. Always a little bit of a risky prospect as you're trying to assault this hill, but uh, so far so good. Looking to other sectors of the map, we can see our SU-100 has made it across the bridge. The T-150 is pushing up from the south, so the noose is really tightening on the enemy tank destroyers that have occupied F-7. Super Hellcat is reaching the top of the hill. It manages to get a shot into SU-152. Follow-up shot here, and it sends it packing. Moving around, they are starting to assault the hill position of the enemy team and lo and behold there is the Breton Panther that had retreated from the fjord area. Leo driven by Grim Reaper goes in first. Super Hellcat pushing the flank does cop a bit of a hit. It seems to be the uh, victim of the focus fire here from Breton Panther. It gets knocked out but we have Rob S right in behind the Breton Panther punching away and claims its fifth kill. They change tack, head up the hill towards the Achilles. They're joined by SU-100. Grim Reaper goes down to the British tank destroyer. Rob S puts a nice meaty shot into return. Now it's probably going to get the follow-up here because SU-100 probably doesn't have the gun depression and it claims its sixth kill of the game. All indications are the last enemy vehicle is behind it. The forest is getting pinged there, turning to face and uh, SU-100 knocked out by Stura Mill, sole surviving enemy vehicle and, and T-150 ends up taking the final Final kill. So always nice to see a good brawl come together at the end of the fight. You might not like it, but I choose violence in my battle crescendo. So let's go and take a look at the results. So with a 13-8 no-cap victory, Rob S of the Saints clan has come away with an Ace Mastery badge in the Tier 6 Russian medium tank T3485. This places them in the top 1% of tanks as far as their experience scores are concerned for the last week in this vehicle. For their efforts, they have also picked up the Top Gun medal, taking six kills on the enemy team between Achilles, Comet, 85M, KV-2, Britan Panther, and VK-3601H. They've also picked up a few badges of merit here. Bruiser for causing damage to internal modules or crew members at least five times in the course of the battle. They've also picked up the Duelist medal for destroying at least two enemy vehicles that have caused damage to them in turn. And the Fire for Effect medal as well, having done at least their hit points in damage. In this case, over 2,700 hit points of damage inflicted on the enemy team. But uh, this was quite a high damage scoring game for the team with, with Molen Lab Leo taking nearly 1,700 hit points in the Super Hellcat and Grim Reaper 456 in the Leo taking over 1,800 hit points of damage. Uh, the difference is, however, Rob S was bottom tiered. They got the kills and this is kind of reflected in the experience score that they've received. It's just nearly double the next vehicle behind them being Molen Lab Leo and the Super Hellcat. Special mention on the enemy team, the Stura Mill had quite a noticeable impact on Rob S's team here. Nearly 2,800 hit points inflicted and two kills, but uh, try as they might, they didn't quite carry hard enough today. Having a look to the detailed report, they actually ended up completing Union 15 for the Excalibur personal campaign mission, which awarded them a payout of 80,000 credits. Now, that had gone to offset the rather significant ammunition bill that he had with a, uh, a predisposition towards the premium ammunition. We see nearly 61,000 credits expended on resupplying that ammunition. So it would have turned a, a net loss of about 18,000 credits here, but thanks to that payout, we end up with a profit of nearly 63,000 credits. Um, also worth noting, the shots fired. He's fired 20 shots over the course of the battle. He's hit every single shot, and all but one of them has actually penetrated and caused damage. So there is a, a very strong argument there that if you're using your premium ammunition, getting that extra 50 millimeters of penetration, you're not fecklessly plinking off targets downrange and you're much more confident of your shot actually meaning something. And when you're coming away with a nice mastery badge like this from bottom tiered, you certainly can't complain with the net effect on target.
So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. We are forever trying a couple of new things. You might have noticed we did a few inset shots. Um, I'm really keen to hear what you think of those uh, in the comments. Were they too short? Were they too small? Were they too difficult to track? Um, I'm just trying to work out from a publishing and editorial point of view what is what is the best way to demonstrate some of these concurrent events on the battlefield should i just try to reorder them really keen to hear what works for the audience because uh, we're absolutely loving bringing this new format to your screens in the meantime please don't forget to like subscribe do check out our twitch channel or discord channels while our youtube production has slowed down we've actually taken to be featuring replays over on our twitch channel so uh do check that out and if you are on our discord and please do check out that link below you'll see a, a, a sub channel there for our submission platform drop your replays down there if you'd like to see your stuff featured on our twitch channel live reviews on saturday afternoon in the meantime, take care out there.